Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be going through the 25 containers I currently have on my Pi hosted server. So let's get started. Now it's been a year since we started this series and I did mention in the beginning of how many containers can we actually fit on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, so far I'm currently at 25 and I've seen actually more than this. Uh, some of my members on my Discord got up to like 49. So it's ridiculous like how many you could fit in here. So I'm gonna go through some reviews on what I have installed, how much resource it's taken, um, all the specs and spiels and everything. So you guys could know where we stand right now with just 25 containers. Also keep in mind, I decommissioned my server that used to do all these services and I squeezed everything I can into this Raspberry Pi and it's still working very well. Anyway, let's jump into the desktop. Now I'm just gonna go down the list of everything from top to bottom. I don't have in any order. This is actually the first time I'm doing this so I don't even know what results I'm looking at. So let's begin. Now our latest episode that we just did was Samba, which is allowing your Docker to be a NAS or your Pi hosted to be a NAS. So we have that installed. Dashi is something I'm still working on. I don't have a video for it, but Dashi is a desktop that allows you to, um, it's basically Homer. I replaced Homer with Dashi. This way it's a little bit easier to modify and add settings to this dash panel. It's not complete yet. I'm still working on it. That's how come I haven't done a video on this yet. But yes, I do like Dashi so far compared to Homer. Next, we have Uptime Kuma as a container that allows you to monitor uh, other servers. You don't see a port here right now, but it is, if you've seen my other video with the VPNs, it's forwarded through a VPN to another server that I monitor. This way I could monitor my own network as well as other people networks through the VPN. What it looks like is basically it gives me alerts when something is down and something is up. If you notice every morning around 440, it does go down because I actually have a scheduled job to take down the network and everything just to refresh uh, a certain part of their network. But yeah, you will see something go down and then come back up. But you can add as many as you want over here. You can also do uh, Discord hooks. This way, uh, if something does go down, it'll send you an alert through Discord or any other thing like email or texting. So I've been using this and it's been great. Next, we have uh, Winscribe. Again, that networking tutorial. I have multiple VPNs and I have this connected through multiple VPNs and also SOC 5 pass through. So my browser could actually use either Winscribe or actually use private internet access. So Glue Tunnel is my PIA. I didn't name this yet, but I know this is my PIA or private internet access. And this is the same as the Winscribe VPN. I have multiple ports that go through my PIA, which is a Deluge and some downloaders, and also another SOX5, so I could use either connection. Now, Rust Desk is another video that I showed you guys, which is remote desktop, just like TeamViewer. Uh, I would definitely check that out. Monitor CAD Advisor is a part of the stack of the Raspberry Pi Docker monitor, which I will be showing you at the end of the video so we can see all the statistics and stats. Another new thing that I put in was MeTube. It's also actually in my app template. I just added that recently and it allows you to download from YouTube itself and it bypasses all the stuff. You just put in the playlist or the video URL and it'll actually download the video. Um, it's a pretty small container, easy to use. It's just sometimes when I'm recording these types of videos and I need to use some footage from another video, I need to download it, so I use MeTube for that. Uh, Aria NG is also another downloader, and I actually have that going through my private internet access, which is this right here, 6900. And from here, you could actually just drag and drop like URLs and it'll download whatever from the site. So if you need to download an ISO or whatever from whatever site, you could just paste the URL here and then to do multi-threading downloading. So if you're familiar with ARIA 2, uh, this is just a front end version of it. And that's what I use. Again, it's all in my app template. So you can grab that as well. Uh, we have Flare Solver. Um, this is a part of another, you could say stack or a collection of dockers that actually have to be used together. This is actually not in my app template yet because I'm actually working on some configurations with it, but this allows you to bypass Cloudflare um, timeouts. So this is needed for some indexing services. So this is more of a service that you can't log into, but it's just a service that it needs. Now, if you know, you know, I have sonar, radar, and also jacket on here. Now, you, obviously, like I said, if you know, you know what it is, but those three services is what maintains all my media and downloads, including the Flare server. So you could say they're part of a stack. 
it is in my app template and if you ever have a chance to play around with it go right ahead it's pretty cool but i'm not going to really go deep into that it's just you if you know you know all right go check it out next we have uh, guacamole and that is my remote desktop session. I actually forward this through my wire guard. This way I have connection to my own house. I also have connection to a couple of other places that I have connections to. So guacamole, check out that video. It's a full remote desktop web browsing session. It allows you to go into the web browser and log in through multiple computers. Let me see if I can pull up a config for this. Uh, I think I have it right over here, 8080. And here I have a few locations, which is my home, I have my NAS, I have my containers, I have my Windows 11 machine. I have more over here that I'm not really gonna show, but if I was to connect to a Windows 11 machine, it would just go through a web browser, and then here I am. This is my Windows 11 desktop. And then I could use this just like my normal desktop, but it's through a web browser. So it's very, very convenient, and you could use this over your phone. It's just something that if you don't have access to a computer that has remote desktop software or anything, you could just go through this browser and it will work. So I love using this guacamole. It's not as fast as uh, the actual program, but it's enough to get my work done. Next, I have my Winscribe proxy and my Sox5 proxy. So my Winscribe proxy obviously goes to my Winscribe VPN. Then I have my Sox5 proxy that actually will go to my glue tunnel, which is my private internet access VPN. So these two work in conjunction with those two. Uh, then we have Deluge, that's my torrent downloading application. Again, no ports here because it passes through my glue tunnel, which is 8112. Uh, I have my WG server. This one is where I have multiple connections to multiple locations. And you see that I have two ports passing through, which is my guacamole and also my uptime Kuma. So I have those two connections passing through a regular WG server just to other locations. Um, this one is pretty cool. If you know about Plex and you want to have a better data uh, collection for your Plex, like who's watching more videos, how much playtime, all that other stuff through your Plex, this tracks all the information. So definitely something good to have if you have Plex server and you wanna maintain all the tracking. Uh, I'm not gonna show you because I have a lot of content in there that I have friends on that I don't wanna show anything about it, but Google this, or you can even look up in the app template. It is already in my app template that you can download. Obviously, we skipped over radar because we talked about it with sonar and radar. Then we have our monitoring, which is a part of the Raspberry Pi Docker monitor stack. We have my WG Easy, which is my WireGuard Easy connection setup for my house. I've done a video on this as well. You could just create a brand new connection. You could QR code it. You could download the config, delete it, whatever it is. It's very, very simple to set up WireGuard. Uh, we have our KMS, which I think I only talked about this in my Discord. Um, again, this is one of those things that if you know, you know, but KMS, it's a key management server. So figure it out what that name could be for whatever purpose. Then one of my favorite um, portainers or containers is the snippet box. I use it all the time. You guys asked about it on my last video. That's what it is, snippet box, where I could scroll up, search for all my notes and have all my documentation to when I do something with Linux. So snippet box is definitely one of my favorite dockers to have on this setup. Uh, last but not least, it's Portainer. I didn't really consider this as a container. It is still, but we're using the interface itself. So uh, technically we have 26 containers, but I'm saying 25 because I don't consider Portainer as one. Now let's jump into our Raspberry Pi monitor, which will be port 3000. And if I remember, there we go. I almost forgot how to log in. If I go into my dashboard, we have our metrics and here we have everything all set up. And it's got an uptime of 4.7 weeks, which is pretty long time for this. It has not gone down. I do have uh, a fan for this. So the temperature stays around 50 to 46, right around that area, but I have the fan on low. So I am in a case with a low fan setting. Um, CPU is not usually busy unless I'm downloading something. So this stays relatively low unless I'm using guacamole or downloading. RAM usage, which is crazy. Right now I got 25 portainers and I'm using about 45% and I'm on an eight gigabyte version of Raspberry Pi. So we're using 45%, which means we're about four gigs in or technically like 3.5 gigs in of RAM. So if you are using a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi, with this type of setup of how many things I got, we're kind of at the limit. The swap usage is only a hundred megabytes. That's what default. Uh, Raspberry Pi OS has. So 49% of 100 megabytes is only 50 megabytes, which is not much. I could always expand this if I needed to, but 
I just leave it as that. I just use my regular RAM for it. We are at half load pretty much by the time of 25 containers, I mean containers. And when my friend said he has 49 containers, it makes sense. He could probably get up to like maybe eight gigs or a little bit less. We also have a um, system load, average five minutes, which is 10%. And that's because I'm clicking through all the pages from before. This usage out of 120 gigs, which is not much because I don't store anything here other than configs. So we don't need much storage. Technically an SD card with 32 gigs of storage would be more than enough to contain all this because everything is ran through my NAS. So my NAS has all the files and most of the bigger chunks. So over the time of how long is this? Six hours? Let's expand this to seven days. And you could see that everything now kind of changes and we have like more CPU usage throughout the week. Uh, over here, anytime that I'm trying to download something and you could see this is from a couple of days ago from 8.12. When I'm downloading something, how I could tell is because that's glue tunnel. It spikes up uh, everything. My CPU usage, my RAM usage. Um, where's the RAM over here? CPU and then RAM over here, memory per container. You could see it's using 3.7 gigs when I'm trying to download a bunch of stuff. My CPU spikes up. Everything spikes up when you're downloading. So if you are turning this into just a downloader box or seating box or whatever you want to call it, RAM is your enemy or your friend. You need more RAM for that. If you are moderate about what you're downloading, how much you're downloading, you can kind of maintain where you want to be. So just keep that in mind. Anything that has to do with downloading, VPNs and stuff like that, it will use a lot of resources. For a week's point of view, if I'm just idling and not downloading anything and just hanging out there and using my normal stuff like my WireGuard server, it's not too bad. You could actually survive off four gigs of RAM with probably more portainers if you are not using any downloading agents. So that's where we stand with this. At the end of this whole thing, so far 25 containers, downloaders, and you saw how much services I have. Uh, it's about 3.7 gigs or 3.5 gigs of RAM that we're using, especially when you are downloading, it will peak that all the way up to the top, but we are still able to go ahead and add more containers. So we're going to keep doing this up until it struggles. Once it gets to like seven or eight gigs of RAM, we're going to see where the limit it is. So I will be reviewing this type of video again, probably in the near future, another six months from now, maybe when I got more containers parked into this guy. And then maybe at that time, I might need to expand to a second Raspberry Pi. And then we got to start doing some expansion there, a swarm, Kerbinites, I don't know, something that we will put together where we can maintain and manage multiple Docker systems. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about this, or if you have any containers that you'd like to talk about, let me know down in the description below and also join my Discord. We're always talking about new Dockers that are coming in. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.